HBD President Art St. Cyr, the announcement today, you guys are re-upping for the IndyCar Series. Not exactly a surprise for everybody, Art, but can you talk about how, how long the, the contract's for? Uh, well, the contract is a multi-year contract. The way it's written right now is it's a two-year contract for 16 and 17 uh, with a uh, option for 18, 19, and 20. So this is, I mean, we all said the same thing. You can't have one engine manufacturer. we got to have Honda, especially since you guys are such good partners as series sponsors and marketing and television commercials and things like that. Was it, was it ever a point where you thought, man, we're not coming back, or was it, did it ever get that critical? No, we were never in that situation. I mean, and honestly... Part of the reason it took so long is because everybody knew it was going to get done. You know, it wasn't that critical of a of a thing. You know, we were working on, you know, kind of the, the verbiage of, of how we're going to do the things, you know, and it's more about the technical specifications. You know, what are the specifications? How are we going to judge them? How are they going to change? How are they going to evolve? All that type of stuff that uh, was really what took the longest amount of time. I, you know, combine that with the fact that, uh, you know, we had the, uh, the lawyers trading back and forth, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. It just... It was not contentious, it was not a struggle, so as a result it kind of got knocked down on the priority list. You know, it didn't stop us from testing, it didn't stop us from communicating, so this is just kind of the culmination finally of saying, okay, let's get it done, we're ready to go. Well, and so many people said, well, you know, Honda had Honda had the leverage because if they didn't get some relief from the aero kits, they were gone, but basically IndyCar looked at the rule book and said, we're going to give Honda some relief because that's what the rules were written. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's a misconception that, that really this contract extension had nothing to do with those aero kit discussions that that were part of the rules from 2015 so as long as those were applied as they were written we didn't really have a problem with that you know this is more about looking forward how are we going to regulate the series how are we going to work with our teams how are we going to propel everything forward the gearheads say are we going to have more horsepower this may and and what about the future engines are we going to stay with v6 turbo how's it looking uh well Actually, this year, if you look at the homologation table for the engine, there's actually more uh, development areas. You know, we've been working on this engine now for about five years, so, you know, you're kind of running out of areas to really develop this engine. But this year was pretty open. Um, we were able to uh, exploit those areas, and, and we think that, uh, you know, the engine's going to have, a, you know, quite a bit more punch to them this year. As far as future packages, um, we're actually in negotiation with uh, IndyCar and, and, you know, the other people that are interested in, in being in the Verizon IndyCar series, you know, whether it's going to be a V6, whether it's going to be 2.2 liter, you know, we're all in discussion about, you know, what is the actual formula going to be as we move forward. And part of this uh, supply agreement allowed that flexibility to really keep that conversation ongoing. We're not locked into some formula that, that would exclude somebody. Last question, Art, what about aero kits? Can you, you got a gauge on how, uh, have you made some strides? Well, honestly, the the one of the problems we had last year with our kit is is well, actually we had two main ones, right? Is one that's very complicated, and two that uh, there were some handling characteristics that were kind of uh, unwelcome, <laughs> I guess for for lack of a better word. So really, one of our main focuses was really to make the kit more predictable, uh, to make it more drivable, you know, make make it more uh, universal, so all of our teams. I guess make the operating window bigger, right? Because you, as you saw last year, you know, if you, if you got the setting right, we could be competitive. The problem was that it's hard to get to that, you know, right at the peak there. So, um, you know, we, we think we've addressed that this year. I mean, you never know what the other side. The other side's a very formidable competitor, so you don't know exactly what they're going to show up with. You know, when the uh, when the season starts here, you know, we have open testing here in a couple weeks. You know, that 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 we're uh, we're looking forward to to see how we measure up. But uh, you know, right now we're feeling good. But uh, you know, until St. Pete comes, you don't really know, right? Right. Thanks for your time, Art. It's always good to have Honda back in the series because they sponsor the mailbag, and we know that's the most important thing at <laughs> Racer.com. Robert Miller, thanks for watching.